Hey guys, welcome to Nevada. Let's set ourselves on fire. But first, maybe we should talk about how we put that fire out once it's happened. And we do that from the flight engineer's seat. So press 3 on your keyboard to sit in the middle here. And then look up. And just left of the APU starting panel. So here's our fire protection system right here. And the fire protection system in the hip consists of two bottles of Freon weighing about 5,600 kilograms. And it's all located in the main transmission on the starboard side. Now it can be deployed or um, dispatched to four different protected core systems in the hip where fires are more likely to occur or to be fatal. So you've got four buttons. You've got um, two rows of four buttons here. So one row here that says first discharge, and that's tied to the first bottle of Freon, and then another row that says second discharge, and that's tied to the second bottle. You've also got four columns of enunciator lights. Each set of lights here is tied to one of those systems. And then you have this fire worn off, which is for turning off the warning system and the flasher if they stay on well after the fire has been extinguished. So to see what those systems are, because the buttons aren't labeled, because of course they're not labeled, you can either look in Chuck's guide, who has an excellent picture of everything labeled right there, or you can mouse over the buttons one by one and have a look. And if you do that, you'll see main discharge left engine, main discharge right engine, main discharge KO50, that's the kerosene heater, and main discharge APU gear. Now, APU gear is actually a mix of two. It's the auxiliary power unit that you use to start your engines, and the gear or gearbox or main transmission. So if there were a fire in either of those systems, you would use this one. The second row is the same. It's the alternate discharge, so the secondary bottle for the left engine, the right engine, kerosene heater, and APU gearbox. The enunciator lights are divided into those columns, so left engine, right engine, kerosene heater, and APU gear. The top row is your fire detected row, so these will flash red with a fire detected in one of these systems. And then the middle row is for first discharge to one of these systems, and the second row is for the second bottle discharge to one of the systems. All right, so the first time we're gonna do this, we're just going to, we're gonna create a fire in our left engine. And I've set up a couple of triggers here, so if I go in my radio menu and other, and then I've got left and right engine fire. I also wanted to do kerosene heater and APU gear fires, but those failures don't seem to be modeled. And the limitations of using the fire suppression system also don't seem to be modeled for those systems, but we'll talk about a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So first of all, let's set a left engine fire. And then we'll wait for that to trigger. It can take anywhere from a few seconds to a minute. And we're mostly just going to watch what happens. This light should come on saying there's a fire. And so should this one, because the first discharge is automatic. As soon as it detects that there's a fire in any of the systems, it fires automatically right away. And it should put the fire out, which should put this light out. And then we're just going to take a look and watch from there and see what happens. So there's our fire and our first discharge. The fire has gone out. And if we look outside the helicopter, that fire is out. But our left engine is still running. And it's still getting fuel and it's still spooling. And there's a pretty good chance that, that can happen. That fire is just going to reignite itself. So we have a second discharge, but if we were to just push this right now, we're just going to get another fire. So we need to stop fuel to that engine. So we can do that from here to the right of the APU panel, the uh, left shutoff valve for the fuel, and up here, the left engine stop. We can hear our engine spooling down, and now we're safe to press our second discharge. Put out that fire, and you can see the light's gone out. And if we jump out again, no more fire. Now our left engine is spooling down. There's no fuel getting in, and it should not be able to reignite. Back inside, we can still hear the flasher. Click, 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 click. It's been 10 seconds since the fire was out. That's still on, so we can push this button here. It turns off the fire signal, and that goes away. Now at this point, we have discharged both of our Freon bottles. So if there were to be a fire in the right engine right now, we're out of luck. There's, not, there's nothing we can do because we've discharged the first bottle on the left engine and we discharged the second bottle on the left engine. All right, so we've got ourselves a fresh helicopter here. You can see that nothing has been discharged yet. 
We're going to repeat what we did before with the left engine fire, but this time we're going to try to get the fuel shut off before the fire reignites itself. So again, we open our radio menu, we go F10 for other, and then left engine fire. And now we play the waiting game. There's our fire, so we're going to immediately shut off the fuel to the left engine and stop that engine from spooling. So now the fire has gone out. We've only discharged one bottle. And so far, that fire is not coming back. Let's zoom in. See, we've discharged the first bottle, but we still have our second one remaining, and our fire is out. So if you can get to it quickly enough, shut off fuel and shut off that engine immediately, you should be able to keep that fire out. Now, I know that can be pretty a uh, pretty tall order when you're trying to do precision maneuvers, you're trying to come in for a landing or something, and suddenly the engine catches fire. But if you can manage it, I guess that's why this helicopter has a crew of three at the end of the day, because stuff like this is pretty hard to do while you're flying. And we can turn off the fire warn. So now let's set a fire in the right engine. So we go back into other, we go to right engine. We're going to set a fire in the right engine and watch what happens here. All right, so the right engine caught fire. First discharge fired, but nothing happened because that tank is empty. So we're going to shut off fuel to that engine. We're going to stop the engine. And then we're going to manually press the second discharge. And that put out the fire. And it should stay out. But now our engines are off. And our generators are failing. So let's start turning some of that stuff off. Turn off nagging Natasha for a minute. Turn off the fire warning. There we go. I'm not sure why you have to recycle those switches sometimes to get them to actually register as off, but you do. Alright, so we've got two engines that had fires, but have been put out. Now at this point, do you suppose we could restart the helicopter? Should be safe at this point, right? You think? Maybe? Even if it was, uh, you know, even if it actually was safe to restart the engine at this point, the and the fire suppression system has a secondary effect of any time you discharge one of these bottles to one of these systems it locks them out from starting so at this point we're off but we do have batteries on we have inverters on and we have all of our circuit breakers on so in theory we should be able to just fire up the apu and then fire up an engine we can turn our fuel back on We've got our tank pump still running. We can turn on our e APU. I'm just gonna come up here. You guys can see this a little better. There. So our APU started up just fine. It's got pressure in the tank. We're gonna put our engine, our selector here on left and the crank to start. And then we're gonna try to start the engine. And you can probably hear me clicking here. Nothing's happening. And the same goes if we flip over to right. Nothing's happening. So this is exactly what I mean. If you happen to discharge the fire suppressant to any one of these systems, those systems get locked out from starting. Now, the APU and the KO50 kerosene heater seem to be exempt from this in the same way they seem to be exempt from having a failure for them modeled. If you happen to discharge the bottles here manually for either of those two systems, you'll still be able to start them up. So my assumption is that's just something that isn't modeled in DCS because the manual doesn't say anything about them being exempted. All right, so that is fire suppression in the hip. If I got anything wrong, if I missed anything, made mistakes, or you know something I don't, please let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time.